Well, I think it's one of the most easiest and cost-effective modalities to help to remove biofilm mass, remove divitalized tissue. Uh, I like to use sharp surgical debris with a nice little 15 blade. You don't have to press hard, it's very sharp, it can debride. There are curettes that you can use, but you gotta press kind of hard with those when you're talking about in the office or in an outpatient wound center, okay? I mean, we think about when you have a biofilm mass that's in a wound, if you can debride that away, you can kind of break that up and, and open that up. Because a biofilm mass can start to form in about 10 minutes and can be fully mature in about three hours, all right? So that's why you need things to go on there to, to constantly defeat that. But a sharp with a blade is one of the best ways that you can to destroy that biofilm mass, to debride away divitalized tissue, to help you to progress. Now, if we have to go into the OR, I like to use VersaJet hydrosurgery. It's one of the best things to do. It spins so fast, it cuts like a knife, it sucks up all the bacteria, it's clean, it's easy to do, okay? Um, and help you to get to a cleaner wound so you can start putting skin onto those areas. Um, I don't think that it's just one debris, make, you know, you hear this mantra of converting a chronic wound to acute wound. There's a lot of things that you have to do, right? Because otherwise we would debride it once and should go on to heal. It's not the case. Very multifactorial problem in treating chronic ulcerations. So, sub surgical, easy, cost effective, but it's not done enough. Okay? Now, granted, we have to make sure that they have adequate blood flow to support a debridement. Okay? So, when you first see a patient, you've got to get them to, to have vascular testing. Well, there's arterial Doppler, venous reflux study, they have venous ulcerations, but you gotta make sure that your blood flow is adequate to support mm -hmm. uh, debridement, right? Somebody comes in with a big gangrenous foot, it's cold foot, you can't be debriding that. We know it's a vascular problem. We have to get those things done. Okay, but a majority of people with chronic wounds, we can debride while you're getting in the process of getting their vascular test, but you gotta do that. Mm -hmm. And I think they're afraid of making uh, the wound bleed or making it bigger. Well, I like to use Omnistat, and for, for several reasons. One is that it's a natural polysaccharide. The second most ubiquitous polysaccharide in nature. It's a natural ECM protein. It works independently of the clotting cascade, which is a nice thing, because most of these people are tremendously anticoagulated. Even if, they're, you know, if they have low platelet counts and they're thrombocytopenic, it doesn't matter. If they're on 400 pounds of Coumadin a day, it doesn't matter, right? And plus also, not speaking about Amistad, but chitosan in general has a capability to stimulate fibroblast migration. So you're going to put a, you're going to put a, uh, a sugar into the wound that's going to cause the, the, the red blood cells to stick together, to clot, but then it can be broken down to become glucosamine. Chitosan in general, I'm not saying that Amistad does that, but chitosan in general. But at the same time, we can stimulate fibroblast migration. So not only do we get coagulation, we develop a provisional matrix so that we can have cell migration. How nice is that in a hemostatic agent? We're not burning tissue like you would with, with uh, silver nitrate. Thrombin is only indicated for minor bleeding, where, where Omnistat's indicated for minor, moderate, and severe bleeding, right? And you don't have to care if the patient's anticoagulated. It's nice to have a product that you can do all those things with to help your patient.